All right, we're back with our ISS Intrepid. Um, and they are at the scout base after a shakedown survey on a planet in the local system. Had some problems, um, as documented here. Uh, some equipment problems, and then they also had some... Uh, uh, the captain actually had a malfunction with a vac suit, and uh, she did get poison from the flora, fauna, whatever, and she recovered. So they've returned to base, they've been decommed, uh, everything seems okay at this point. Uh, good news is the jump drive problem that was out there has been found and is being repaired uh, over three days here. So we see here I've already built in my timeline here, repair is complete, prep for mission, so they're shooting for a launch time, 1300 day 6. But in the meantime, there are some other questions I need to answer here. Um, and I'll put it on this chart here. Yeah, the first question is, uh, did the uh, was the jump drive repair sabotage? Now, I'm going to do a very unlikely for that, since the other two said um, that the other two checks for sabotage came back no. So going to go to my oracle here, yes or no, I'm going to go for uh, very unlikely at this point, and we need to roll a d20 on our die roller here, number of sides is 20, 1, start, and survey says a 9, very unlikely, a no. Okay, so that's nice. Based on the captain's background, if you follow that, uh, she's not well liked on her home planet by the corporations and the government. Uh, you wouldn't put anything past them at this point for the sake of money, but very unlikely. And the answer is um, no, if I can get this to cooperate. Okay, no. Okay, so that's good. And then we're going to roll to see, um, this comes out of actually the uh, Zoser Solitaire, whenever the crew is stuck for a certain amount of time, um, you know, argument, etc., you roll 2d6 if it's 8 or higher, they're going to roll on a bad reaction table. You can tweak it. Uh, they give examples. Um, the Prometheus was Ridley Scott, an alien, they were constantly fighting, so to avoid a bad reaction, they make it 10 plus, but the Star Trek crew gets along, no fisticuffs in the next generation that I'm aware of between crew members, so they say 5+, plus. I'm going to just say 7+, plus, because they've been through a lot, crew of 4, but if they can roll 7+, plus, we don't have a bad reaction. Um, so let me pull up my die roller again. Sorry, I got too many windows going, and I don't know where the die roller went. Um, there it is. So we got to go 2d6, 7 plus. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yes, they're just singing, singing by the campfire. <laughs> okay, well, this crew is bonding. <laughs> uh, totally, I guess would be the answer. Totally. So uh, this is a well-oiled machine after all their hazards. Uh, and then the last thing I want to roll before they leave, uh, we already did, yeah, we did the starport encounter, um, and that was a security issue, so there's something going on out there. But the next thing we want to look at is there's an NPC encounter table in here, too, that I want to check. So let's see if I can find it. Um, hold on a second. Random rolls. NPC encounters. Okay, just a second here. Yeah, actually it's called Colorful Locals. Um, this may not cause anything, but let's see if they bump into anybody here. Uh, 2d6, a 66. Wow, player's choice. <coughs> and 63. Traders. Well, that's what I would expect. Um, so they bump into some traders, uh, and 
let's see. Well, then we get something else here, 2D here. Uh, PC serve 5 plus. Nobody's done that. Word pop, no. Social standing, three points are higher or lower than NPC. Well, I bump into traders. Uh, I need to unpack that then. Uh, they get some information from the traders. There is some trade going on. And they get some information from the traders telling them a uh, little background here. Uh, don't really know how to make it up at this point, so maybe I'll save that for next one because I do want to get the get them safely off the shi um, off the planet. So let me find my my uh, notes here. There we go. Uh, traders. I'll unpack this later. Say more info about trade in the near subsector. Okay. Gonna have to figure out what that is. Okay. We'll go from there. Um, so let's see. So right here before launch, jump drive repair. It was not sabotage. There are no crew problems. Harmonious even between uh, the captain and the engineer at this point. That's being totally reinforced. Uh, and they did bump into some traders who gave them warnings. Um, it could be something as simple as they've heard about pirates out there. Uh, but let me think on that one, and I'll decide that later. Uh, and now they're clear. They've got orders um, from HQ or from up the chain. Uh, they are cleared now for up to a six-month survey, uh, and their focus will be systems near the sector here. So we'll just see after the time goes. But their goal is they could go this way down the chain, but they're thinking maybe the Grand Tour here, although these lead up too. We do have some gas giants here. We don't have one here. Uh, <coughs> so this path does look like all gas giants. So preliminary survey, uh, six months through these systems here, <coughs> captain's discretion, but with the heightened security and the reports of uh, perhaps illegal trading, perhaps pirates, contraband, uh, captain does have the orders if they come across information that <coughs> she deems uh, is important for security because the Corvette squadron, patrol squadron is uh, technically three weeks out. Um, they're making stops along the way. They could be accelerated. <coughs> she, she's cleared to return to base and, and deliver that information. So that's it. They've got their orders. They're heading out. I may unpack this meeting with traders a little later. So here's launch. So they will launch and then they have to um, travel to 100 um, diameters, okay? That's where you can't do a jump one, within 100 diameters of the largest body in the system. In our case, the largest body of the system is the star itself. It's a dwarf star, um, and there is a table that does tell us. I'm going to the... Um, Oh, where do I have that? I'm going to the uh, Explorer Handbook. Hold on. Okay. Uh, this is why I love a computer. Although I'd be paging through books here. I already calculated the jump shadow based on uh, the 100 diameters. It's 0.9 through astronomical units. That's distance from the sun to the Earth, which is approximately 140 million miles. So that means... Um, their transit time is going to be uh, somewhere down here it had it. I need to centralize these. Um, nope, I'm down in planets here. Sorry about that. Here we go. So a dwarf star is... Wow, I just had that here. Uh, 
Um, let's see. We, so we had a here main sequence dwarf star. There it is. I'm sorry. Jump shadow, and that's what we have here. A main sequence. So we're 0.93 AU's or 140 million miles. So that means their transit time to the jump point is going to be. Um, let's see if I got that here. Transit time to the jump point is going to be here. Spacecraft operations. Uh, here's one AU, uh, and they can travel at 2G. So we're going to put them right at two days, 48 hours. Uh, that's fine. They're going to pad it, go a little beyond it at 0.93. So we'll just say as yes, two-day transit to the uh, jump point. So let's record that uh, to get outside of that. Wow, uh, it's amazing how many of these I have to go through to get working. Uh, 48 hours. So we've got some rolls. Uh, I think we got one roll to do here. We've just got to do a um, got to do a check to see if they run into anything. Um, let's see what happens. So, jumping from world to world, random roll. Star we've already done the star point encounter. Now we're going to do a starship encounter table. Uh, Major Frontier, page 40 and 45. So, let's see if they encounter anything on the way out. That would be interesting. So, here we go. I need to condense all these sh charts. Uh, it says page 40. There it is. Okay, here we go. This is our table. Uh, frontier route. 2 to 8, nothing. So, once again, i got to find my handy-dandy die roller. And we're rolling on 2d6. Um, let's see if there's any modifiers. Minus 1x. Uh, I, th I don't think we're an x starport. I think we're an e because it is somewhat developed. X just means bare ground. So I'm going to roll oh, two dice, 2d6. Let's see if I run into anything on the way to the jump point. A 9. They are on the frontier table. Let's see what that is. This is the frontier table. And we've got 3d. Let's see what they find on the way out. Uh, let me do it again. There we go. Three, four, five, six. Oh, they bump into another scout on the way back. Or that's interesting. Or just arrived. Okay. Second scout on site. So. That introduces some. They may try the other way around and meet them. So let's uh, let's update that. They bump into a scout. Uh, let's see. I'm trying to find my uh, one note here that has that. Oh, that's too bad. I changed that. So let's go. Uh, let's see. Starship encounter inbound inbound scout ship. Okay, that's good. One of their own because this is a big subsector. Be interested to roll the type of scout ship. It's a Scout 100. Uh, so it's their class. Um, yep. And I'll see if I need to develop anything about this, but uh, that makes sense. It's a big subsector. It's another Scout S. <coughs> um, <coughs> Frontier for Scout military ships roll on the appropriate table. Scouts. Oh, no, we don't know what the scout did. Look at that. <coughs> Got a 3D on the scout ship. Let's see what it does. Seven. 
eight, nine, ten. Oh, launching a nav beacon. Okay, that's pretty monotonous. That's fine. Okay, we type that in. So it looks like uh, we are safe there. Um, so coming back to our tracking here. So the only thing I need to pack unpack here is think about. We've got our orders. Uh, the trader information, it's still ambiguous. Uh, there is trade going on. Yeah, some of it's illicit. And there's a whiff of pirates. So that's uh, a possibility out there. On their way out, they encounter a inbound scout ship that's dropping a nav beacon also. Um, and then I'll think about that, but I'm leaning towards uh, probably it's coming into the scout base and it's going to start its own scout survey. It may be doing the other uh, chain around here, which means potentially they will uh, encounter them, maybe coming the other way. Because all these places are easily within jump to, well, once we get down here, it's a little bit too much here. I'll look up the ship. I forgot if it's jump two or jump three. But um, yeah, if they work their way down the chain, and they work their way up the chain. That's the plan. Okay, so we've got another scout ship up out there. So we may encounter it later. Um, and then uh, we successfully get to the 100 diameter point. And uh, the next thing we're going to resolve on our jump target is going to be a jump one to here. Uh, and we're just going to work our way. It's got a gas giant. We're good to go. Um, there, I've got the Type X starport. Size 5, that's a, this guy's a big one, Type 5A. This is the main. We haven't mapped out the full subsystem. Um, I'll just throw a little philosophy out there. There are, there are sites that can generate a whole subsector or full sector uh, on the fly, but part of my campaign here is kind of my wargaming side. I just want to work through the rules and discover as we go. So, and just see where things lead here. Uh, we've got some interesting thread lines going on here with the, with the crew, um, with the traders, with the security, you know, etc. So, um, we're just going to jump to here and see if it works. So, let's go ahead and do our jump calculations. So I'm pulling from the spaceship operations. This is in the core rule book. I've got some compendium stuff I throw in. Uh, jump travel must be 100 diameters from any object larger than the ship. So we've moved out to there. Gravity makes ship. Oh yeah, I got that. Pass chain. Um, and here's what they say. Easy 4 plus astrogation check. Um, 1D times 10 minutes EDU. But they just spent, well, I don't know. Do you have to calculate it there? That's an interesting one. Um, so I'm probably going to have to pull up our astrogator and our engineer J-Drive Trek. We're not using unrefined fuel. We're not within 100 diameters. Um, miss jump. Effect minus 1. Appear one day later. Effect minus 2. Okay, fuel usage. Uh, that's the duration. 10% per parsec. We're only going to do uh, 10 tons of fuel. Uh, jumping from within, we're not jumping from within. Jump precipitation, if during jump, interval you get within 100 diameters of object, dumped out of jump, we're not going to do that. Astro plot and engineer entry point good, short of 100. Okay, we're going to have to work through this here. Pretty detailed. But let's do this. We got two easy checks modified by um, EDU and uh, astrogation. So I'm going to have to pull up my characters here. Alright, so let's look at the astrogator Bob. Um, and he, does he have an EDU modifier? Uh, let's see. That's what it said, EDU 10. He's got a plus one. That's nice. For education, so he's relatively smart. Uh, astrogation is zero, so no penalty. So he gets the plus one for his education. I'm curious about Sonny. Uh, I don't think he has J-Drive. 
but uh, let's see over here. Wow, it's so hard to find this. Um, where is there's spacecraft, but that needs to be unpacked. Uh, I'm going to assume he's zero at this point. Yeah, this will be under here, and we've got a zero for him. So we'll keep it there. So, and his EDU is 10 also. Wow, we got a smart crew. They both get plus ones on a four roll, on a four or better. So I'm having a feeling this is going to be... These two are, barring the unforeseen, going to nail this jump here. And that's where we'll close it. So let's pull it up. There it is. We need two dice. We need a four or greater. First the astrogation. Oh, that's roll dice. Got a seven. So we got a plus three effect. And then the engineer. Oh, nine, ten. Okay, so let's uh, put that in just in case. I think we got a solid jump, though. So let's come out here. Um, I'll have to run this out later, but Astro got a seven plus three, and then uh, J Drive roll got a ten over four is a plus six. So this looks like a solid jump, solid jump for these guys. Go back and review this later. Um, 1D times 10, oh. The EDU applied to that, so these are flat rolls. So, my bad. Got a plus 2 on the Astrogator, plus 5 on the J-Drive. Sonny's pretty experienced. Um, and we got it. Uh, jump Easy Engineer. DM minus two with a no fail miss jump effect. Yeah, we didn't get these effects of minus one, minus two, so we're good. We're good. We got a good jump. Uh, and it's going to be for probably a week. Okay. Uh, we got no bad jumps here. Yeah, I think we're good. We're good. So that is good news. Um, so let's just tie it up here. I'll clean this chart up here. Good jump. And we got seven days. I'll review the rules. There may be some tweaks around that, but we'll just assume the standard no matter how far you go. And it was, uh, uh, one jump one. They only did one parsec. So they used 10% of their fuel, 10% of their weight of 100 ton. So we got 10 tons of fuel they used. And we'll have to look up our ship here, the next one, to see um, if it's worthwhile to refuel or whatever. All right, so we got a good jump. We're jumping to the outer system. There is a choice to jump to the inner or the outer. Uh, we're just being cautious. Outer system and uh, at least 100 AU, 100 diameters from the primary. All right, so I think I'm going to end it here. Uh, our con crew continues here. Um, this is a great role here. I mean, this was boxcars. This crew loves each other. Maybe it is a love boat after all. Um, we do have to roll for a transit, and we'll change that for next time. Transit event. Uh, or maybe we can roll for it real quick here before I end it. Uh, I got too many of these up. Here we go. I don't know where that is. That's down at the bottom of the scout campaign, so try not to get sickness here. Moving too fast. Onboard event. Perfect. Let's see what happens beyond uh, successfully getting there. That's a D66. 15. Uh-oh. Bummer. Ship malfunction. Dang, how do I figure that out? All right, well, I may have to... S something malfunctioned on the ship, although they did get a good jump. So, that's going to give us something to think about next time. Ship malfunction. 
Okay. So we got some interesting stuff I need to chew on. What did the traders say specifically beyond the ambiguous? I think I've already covered that. Um, they got a good jump, but something something malfunctioned on the ship, so I'm going to have to figure out some random way to figure that one out. So that's the big thing that has to happen before we start mapping the system in the next one. So, again, so for the next uh, video, we'll figure out what malfunctioned on the ship, and then <coughs> we'll, uh, by then, hopefully I'll have decided what uh, rule systems to use to map out the system. I now have Traveler 5.1 or five, whatever they call it. They've got a very involved one. I've got the World Builder I'll look at. Even going back to Classic Traveler, they have the Scout um, book. Had a rather involved one, too. So I'm going to look at those three and decide, as long with the, uh, the Explorer Rift book. So that's pretty cool. So i got different ways. And I'm hoping to narrow down to getting you know a solid procedure knocked out so I don't have to be jumping around books like this. So I'm working on that too for the next one. I also found something for managing your characters uh, online to RPG Suite, or it's a game. Uh, so I'm hoping to play around with that some more, and uh, if it looks good, use it, and then I'll show that in my next video too. Uh, and we'll, we'll go from there. So anyway, we're done now. Thanks for listening, if you've held on this long. And... Uh, Tune in next time as the Intrepid uh, arrives at its first survey system, but something went wrong on the ship, and we're going to have to figure out what that is. So, anyway, and if you want to be notified, please click subscribe. Thanks again, and see you for the next episode as the Intrepid turns. <laughs>